Chapter 154. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Okay, now. After giving me the name Kira, Suho's gaze turned to the side. Even though the Jisun prison incident was solved, there was a reason why Suho still stayed around. When this guy... It was because of Arsha, the Queen Bee, who accidentally found out Suho's identity. Suho, my body has already left this place. Therefore, even if you search for me like this, it's all in vain. Squeak. As Ver squeezed her power into the hand that was holding Arsha, Arsha's doll-sized body was squeezed. But that was all just an act. An alter ego is an empty shell made by combining several bees with only the spirit connected to the main body. Even if the empty shell was slightly crushed, she would not feel any pain. Little Lord, we must find him and kill him anyway. It would be a really big problem if this queen bee were to collude with the apostles of Atalum in the future. Bear had a serious expression. When Suho revealed his shadow power while fighting Harmakan with all his might. Arsha, who was nearby, also noticed Suho's true identity. So the moment Suho defeats Harmakan, the instance dungeon is terminated. He immediately released all the shadow soldiers in all directions to search for Arsha's main body. However, even with the use of both Essil and Grey, who had excellent senses, finding Arsha's true body was not an easy task. The reason was that this area was entirely made up of dense forests and mountains. Since there were so many flying insects living in the forest, Pochion City was the optimal environment for bees to hide. Sk. Suho eventually clicked his tongue and gave up his desire to find Arsha's body. He didn't give up, though. Catching and killing them would be the best and easiest way, but there was also a second method. Maybe this might be better. Arsha. Suho looked straight into Arsha's small eyes and asked directly, Are you doing this because you're curious as to why you can feel Koresha's energy in me right now? I flinch. She could have run away a long time ago if she had wanted to. Arsha's small body trembled as those words hit her in the head. And then he looked up at Suho's face with an awkward expression. No, you were there. As Suho said, Arsha's body could have escaped right now by splitting her body with numerous punishments. But why is Arsha still languishing here, obediently held in Ver's hands? It doesn't matter if she dies because it's her body anyway, but there's no reason for her to take it upon herself to reduce the number of her subordinates. And Suho guessed the reason from the beginning. You're probably curious about my exact relationship with Koresha, right? Fu, as expected, you are Suho. At those words, Arsha finally sighed softly and confessed her true feelings. Yes, it is like that. Arsha's voice was trembling with tension. She, Arsha, has lived for a very long time to become a descendant of Koresha, the King of Bugs and the Lord of Plague. But for some reason, she was feeling a slight but strong Koresha energy from Suho, and she was very embarrassed. Of course, the energy was so weak that it was like a kind of pheromone that would not have been noticed by other insects. It wasn't like this when we first met. Arsha recalled the moment she first met Suho. Until then, only the scent of an animal was emanating from Suho's body. So of course, I thought they were descendants of the Fang Lord. But the problem came after that. When Suho was fighting his lancer, Li Min Sung, he could not only sense the scent of an animal, but also different energy. A poisonous energy was oozing from his entire body. However, at that time, Arsha did not even think that the identity of the poisonous energy was that of Koresha. I thought it was just poison from Lee Minsung. But, the moment I saw Suho up close when I met him again today, Arsha was convinced. Suho, have you ever? For a moment, Suho interrupted Arsha's sentence and spoke firmly. It's not difficult to sadie, spy your curiosity. It's not a big secret. At those words, Arsha's eyes instantly sparkled with anticipation. However, Suo, who saw the reaction, continued speaking with a mischievous smile. By the way, even if I give you an obedient answer, will you believe me? At those words, Arsha closed her mouth with a serious expression. Based on her own experience, humans were a species that could lie without any hesitation. The lies were even so clever that they went far beyond the level of mimicry that insects use to deceive their enemies. Therefore, Suho smiled meaningfully and added one condition. Why don't you take the Pledge of Faithfulness with me? Arsha's eyes widened at those words. How do you, a human being, know the Oath of Faithfulness? A Pledge of Faithfulness. 
It was a covenant that even rulers and monarchs could never deviate from, and that they could never tell lies to each other until the contract was broken. That's because this body taught me. Burr looked proud and raised the corners of his mouth. These days, Burr has developed a hobby of telling old stories to Suho at his bedside whenever he lies down to sleep. This is kind of like an ant's instinct, just like ants catch food one by one and spoon-feed the larvae until they become adults. Since Ver still regarded Suho as a caterpillar that needed to be taken care of, he was anxious to teach him something whenever he had the chance. Whoa, all right. If it's for mutual trust... Arsha eventually accepted Suho's offer, but there was a problem. But how do you intend to take the Oath of Faithfulness? The Oath of Faithfulness cannot be used unless you have power equivalent to that of a ruler or monarch. That's no problem, Suho smiled and raised his eyes. Right. Koresha. Then, as if waiting, an answer came back from a faraway place. Tiring. The king of bugs, the lord of plague, casts oath of faithfulness, deal. Once the oath of faithfulness deal is accepted, the acceptors cannot tell lies to each other. Do you want to accept the oath of faithfulness deal? At that moment, Arsha was so startled that her body trembled. She suddenly had the energy of the dead Koresha extend through her guardian, and she gave herself her compulsion. Uh, how did this happen? This is Koresha's, you too. In response to her confusion, her guardian forced her to answer with a meaningful look in his eyes. Now swear. Everything, I swear. Then Suo also chose to accept. That moment. Tiring. The oath of faithfulness has been made. Acceptors cannot tell lies to each other until the contract is terminated by mutual consent. The King of Bugs, the Lord of Plague, looks at this situation with a very satisfied expression. Even Koresha, who is not usually pleased with Suo, has no choice but to welcome this situation, because it meant that her guardian was determined not to kill Arsha, who was likely to be her descendant. Suho opened her mouth to confirm the validity of this oath. I am. It worked well. The moment I was about to tell a lie, my mouth was forcibly shut. Suho was finally satisfied and asked Arsha. Okay then, let's get started. Arsha, what are you curious about me? Suho, have you become Koresha's priest? It was Arsa who asked a question as if she had been waiting. Suho obediently nodded his head. Right, I became a priest of the King of Bugs and the Lord of Pestilence and received the protection of Koresha. Also at that moment, Arsha asked Suho with her earnest eyes, then please make me one of his. Okay, now it's my turn. Seeing Suho's expression as he decisively interrupted Arsha's words, Arsha couldn't help but feel nervous. I have so many questions about you. Ask anything. I will answer everything. Arsha obediently bowed his head. The role of the priest is to choose the next king. He had to look good to Suho so that he could inherit the power of Quiresha. Then I will ask, Arsha, are you an apostle of Itar, Im, or are you in collusion with Iterim, not? Then do you intend to stand on Iterim's side in the future? No, that will never happen in the future. Arsha's tone was firm. All I want is to succeed Koresha and become the king of bugs. I can assure you that no one who claims to be a descendant of a monarch like me will stand on the side of foreign media. The reason is that. Is there any possibility of an exception? Of course, I can't speak for all races, but the goal of the foreign gods is to consume all the remaining magical energy in our world. The moment their goal is achieved, we all become just a handful of mana and become their prey. And that was something no one wanted. Suho rubbed his chin and nodded. Hmm. That means there is no need for us to be at odds with each other. You're right. So please. By the way. The word us doesn't include humans, right? In response to Suho's question, Arsha's mouth was forced to close. Then she sighed and opened her mouth again. That's right. In the future, I plan to kill and use humans whenever necessary. Then I guess I'll have to kill you. Creepy. Knowing that Suo's words were sincere, Arsha could not help but feel fear. The current guardian was a descendant of the Shadow Lord and even possessed the divine protection of Quiresha. If he tried to kill her in earnest, her fate was that she would eventually be caught by him and die. Now, wait a minute. From now on, I promise to only kill people who are defined as villains. Then you could frame him as a villain first, and then kill him? Human laws are imperfect. So what should I do then? If you tell me, 
I will obey whatever you tell me. In the end, Arsha completely turned her back on Suho. Then he looked at Suho with extremely pitiful eyes and earnestly made a request. I can be your slave. Even if I inherit Koresh's power, I will serve you forever until I die. That's a really interesting thing to say. Stand tall in those words. Suddenly, a great deal of murder erupted from Suho. You skill living. Whoa. Arsha became melancholy due to his overwhelming killing power, which even contained Koresh's blessing, and let out her scream. Suho's black eyes, filled with a distant abyss, looked down at Arsha with an arrogant gaze. Until you die, aren't you a colony of numerous bees? If even one bee dies, that oath will be broken immediately. Sorry, sorry, I never intended to do something like that. Okay, then, appear before me in your true form right now. Well, that's why? No? Suho asked with a smile on his lips. Are you really scared? Are you afraid I'm going to kill you right away? Me, will you promise not to kill me? No, I plan to kill you at any time. But I promise I won't kill you if you don't go against my wishes. Such an unreasonable promise. If you don't like it, you will live forever as a mere insect, not a descendant of Koresha. Arsha felt deep despair at those words. In fact, she knew from the beginning the fact that this conversation is bound to be against you. Now, Suho was the absolute best. Arsha desperately wanted something from Suho, but Suho wanted nothing from Arsha at all. Rather, if there's anything he wants, it's Arsha's death. So he had no choice but to suffer this one-sided abuse of power. Of course, if you obediently follow the abuse, the reward will be certain, because I will be able to become the king of bugs that I have longed for. So, Arsha's answer was decided from the beginning. In the end, Arsha nodded her head, looking even more humiliated and desperate. Oh, I understand. Hmm? But that was then. Sudden, Suho and Arsha, plus Burr and Harmakan, who was receiving attention, they all opened their eyes wide at the same time and turned their heads to look in the same direction. Little Lord, someone is coming. Su Someone with tremendous magical power was running towards us at high speed along the ridge. But that power... Could it be Huangdong Su? The second reason why Suho remained around here, it was because of the possibility that Wang Dong Sok's younger brother, Wang Dong Su, might appear here after hearing the news. Let's all go in. The moment when all the shadow soldiers disappeared at Suho's command. Kuang, finally, he arrived in front of Suho, but he was not Wang Dong Su. Such a terrible smell of blood. As soon as he found Suho, he radiated ferocious energy from his whole body and struck Suho with his sharp white furry fist. Quang. He bared his teeth and roared at Suho, who quickly dodged the attack. Crumble. Avoid this. You're a villain after all. Uh, isn't it? It's Suho. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 155. This chapter is updated by novels.pel. No, no, Kukwa Kwang. The middle-aged man who suddenly appeared did not stop attacking Suho. His name is Baek Yunho. He, the guild leader of the White Tiger Guild and an S-class hunter, had rushed to Pochon City a month after receiving White Tiger's request for support. I heard that Huang Dongsu may have been involved in the Jisun prison escape incident. I never thought I'd find such a strange guy. He was truly an unpleasant guy. Baek Yunho could have bet everything on the fact that Suho was a villain. The moment he set foot in Pochon City, an ominous energy was captured by his highly developed senses. While chasing that energy, I discovered the terrible smell of blood coming from the body of this suspicious guy. There's only one of the two who gives off this unpleasant smell, either a villain or a bounty hunter hunting villains. And Baek Yunho was 200% sure that Suho was the villain. Isn't it so? There was no way that a person skilled enough to avoid attacks from an S class person would only chase after villains. Plus, one more thing. There was clear evidence to convince us that this suspicious guy was a villain. You're not a villain? Do you think I would be fooled by such a shallow lie? Hurry up and reveal that ominous power you've been hiding. Baek Yunho constantly pushed Suho. But Suho was able to handle it without difficulty. But that was because Baek Yunho did not show his full potential. As an S-class hunter, his power was naturally not at this level. 
Just because he was wary of the ominous power that Suho was hiding, he was also hiding his power as much as possible. Ominous power? Suho's brow furrowed at those words. I guess that's... You seem to be referring to Harmakan, little lord. Hearing Ver's whisper, Suho sighed softly. It was like that. Harkaman, a demonic race, was a sinister being whose very existence corrupted the souls of others and used that despair as a curse. He was a useful guy, so I hired him as a shadow soldier, but I never thought it would create such an awkward misunderstanding. We'll see, Harmakan. Suho internally grinds his teeth. Harmakan sensed his mood and trembled ominously in the shadows. When? Besides, there was another reason why Suho was in a bad mood. Why, at times like this? Taking advantage of this moment of panic, Arsha transformed into an ordinary bee and observed the situation from afar. Where are you looking? How dare you go easy on me? Uh oh. There was no time to look away from Baek Yunho's continued attacks. Suho grumbled and thought of the most efficient way to end this pointless fight. Green onions. Suho immediately turned and started running at full speed. Stand there! Suho suddenly ran away, and Baek Yunho chased after him at breakneck speed. He was truly dumbfounded. He knows who he is. Baek Yunho was the strongest beast hunter in existence. Surely that villain knows that fact. You wouldn't know it if you hadn't been discovered by me in the first place. You don't think you could fool my senses and run away. Of course, if the opponent is an S-class villain like Huang Dong-su, things will be different. But just looking at that young guy, that young guy is not Huang Dong-su. I don't know what kind of power he's hiding, but he's not afraid to turn his back on an S-class hunter. However, what is it? Something is a little strange. No, it was very strange. Why is he so fast? Baek Yun-ho could not help but be embarrassed. No matter how much he chased, the distance between him and the villain running ahead of him was not narrowed. Of course, playing tag in a forest full of trees was quite tricky. Because the trees grow irregularly, it is impossible to just run in a straight line. In this situation, having high agility would be much more helpful than normal strength. However, I couldn't make that excuse when I was watching the guy running right in front of me. Ujikun, wajikun, kukwa. Wa qua 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 Have you ever seen such an ignorant guy? That young guy was running in a straight line, smashing down all the trees blocking his path without avoiding them with his body. Are you using a running skill or a charging skill? No. He didn't feel like he was using any skills. Baek Yunho was always on guard for the power he was hiding, so he had an intuition that he had not used the skill right now. No, that can't be true. Of course it's a skill. Okay, it would be a skill. If that's not a skill, what is it? There's no way he could do such an ignorant thing with pure strength. Creepy. Now, wait a minute. Come to think of it. Baek Yun-ho, who was following Suho, suddenly felt an ominous feeling. Could this be the direction? Just as expected. At that moment, the dense forest suddenly ended. Suddenly the view becomes wide open. And beyond that, a small village appeared. At that moment, I saw White Tiger Guild members working hard to rescue the survivors of Yamiri Village. Oh my! Baek Yun-ho, who realized Suho's intention, was greatly embarrassed. Demonic painting. Complete transformation. Quow! As he chases Suho, his whole body gradually begins to change into a monster-like appearance. Because Baek Yun-ho did not want others to see this hideous appearance, he did not give his best unless it was something serious. But now was not the time for him to think about such things. At the end of the direction that villain is running right now, it was because he was the vice president of the Baiko Guild and was leading the guild members in the village, and his daughter, Baik Miho, swine, how dare you think of taking my daughter hostage? Wow! From the moment the demonic fire was cast, his speed had already increased tremendously. And finally, the strong claws that sprouted from his hands were about to scratch the villain's back. Hmm. Hunter Song Suho? Baek Miho turned her head and blinked her eyes at the familiar energy she suddenly felt. Why did you come back? Is there something you forgot? Your father's delivery has arrived. My dad? Chin. At that moment, Baek Yunho's body suddenly stiffened, and he was incredibly embarrassed, in a completely different sense than before. Oh, father? Your father, first, it wasn't my mother.
a rescue scene in Yamiri village where numerous ambulances and healers come and go. There was an awkward silence in the middle of it all. Of course, the only person here making an awkward expression was Baek Yunho. There was Baek Miho glaring at him with his arms tightly crossed in front of him. Dad, I flinch. Baek Yunho's shoulders shook greatly at his daughter's cold words. Aren't you going to apologize? Oh, no. Did I feel it? I really felt an unpleasant vibe from that guy. So what kind of energy is that? I don't feel it at all right now. Then I guess they buried it while dealing with villains here. Baek Yunho, who was intimidated by his daughter's sad look, grovelingly avoided his gaze and muttered in a loud voice. No, and the smell of blood lingers all over my body. Of course, it smells like villain's blood. Besides, you're wearing blood-covered clothes like that, so it's natural that you smell blood. You know what? There are a whopping 500 people. This is the number of villains that Hunter Sung Suho faced alone today. Baek Miho's words were not without a single mistake, and the more he gave excuses, the more Baek Yun Ho's gaze went down to the ground. Besides, you haven't been able to go home yet because of someone else, so you probably haven't been able to shower. Daughter, the pressure method is a little… right. Baek Yun Ho, who had gathered up courage for no reason, but was not able to get his money back, lowered his head again. But even in the midst of all this, he still had doubts about Suho. He could not explain it logically, but his sense was a much more accurate faculty than logic. The energy I felt was not an illusion, and it was something extremely ominous that could never be felt in humans. In the end, Baek Yun Ho decided to trust his own senses. Dad, stop! Hey! No matter what his daughter said behind him, he just walked straight towards Suho. Then he stretched out his hand and grabbed one of his shoulders, stopping him and saying, did you say your name is Song Suho? From what I heard, you're a C-rank hunter? Ha, that can't be true. This guy is a C-rank hunter? A C-rank hunter defeated all 500 villains by himself? Rather than believing such nonsense, it would have been more credible to say that a passing dog turned out to be a boss mob. Fraudulent registrant. Baek Yun-ho growled softly into Suho's ear. Among the hunters, there were a very small number of them who could control magical power. If those guys wanted to, it was possible to lower their grades when measuring magic power. Hunters who hid some of their magic power and received a lower grade than their original grade were often called unauthorized registrants. And most of those who registered illegally are perverted killers whose hobby is massacre. What do you want to say? Seeing Suho looking at him with a shameless expression, Baek Yunho smiled meaningfully and boosted his momentum. And he pressed Suho hard, carefully engraving Suho's face into his mind. Go to the association right now and get your horsepower remeasured. Of course, even so, I will continue to keep an eye on you from now on. So you have to be careful about everything you do, hmm? But something is strange. Eyes, nose, mouth. Baek Yunho's expression, who had Suho's face clearly engraved in his mind, became increasingly strange. Now, wait a minute. Wait for a second. Baek Yunho then quickly takes out his cell phone from his pocket. No, that can't be. With trembling fingers, he turned on Kako Talk on his cell phone and checked the profile picture of the senior he admired the most. Then there. A photo of a beloved grandchild hanging on one senior's profile. When Baek Yunho saw that, his eyes grew bigger and bigger. Huh? Uh-huh. Suho couldn't help but make a puzzled expression when he saw Baek Yunho's appearance becoming contemplative in an instant. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 156. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Baek Yunho. If you stop by and ask passers-by in Korea who Baek Yun-ho is, the answers you get will be very diverse. S-Class Hunter. The guild leader of the White Tiger Guild. Korea's best beast hunter. But if you catch them and ask them again, this time what kind of Baek Yun-ho is, surprisingly the answers that came back were almost similar as soon as possible. Hero. Yes. The president of a large guild? S-Class Hunter? Hunters with that modifier were everywhere in the world. However, None of them were struggling for the safety of citizens as sincerely as Baek Yun Ho. Hunters have always been people who work for money. They all became rich that way. Of course, 
Such utilitarianism was by no means a bad thing in this obvious capitalist world. However, even in a world like this, it was natural for a guild that gave up extremely reasonable practicality and sincerely stepped forward to save the citizens to receive praise from the citizens. That was the case with this villain incident. Wasn't the White Tiger Guild the only one that put all their efforts into a case that all hunters neglected, saying it wasn't worth the money and was just a waste of time? That's exactly why people respect Baek Yun-ho. Therefore, Baek Yun-ho was a proud hero of Korea, recognized by all citizens. But, Baek Yun-ho also did not have this image from the beginning. When he first awakened as a hunter, the special ability he realized was none other than the ability to transform into demonic beasts. Demonization is a skill that changes the body into an appearance reminiscent of a demonic beast and gains wild power. Even in the early days of the Cataclysm, Baek yun -ho, who possessed that skill, was not viewed very kindly. No, there was no need to go that far. Hunters with the lower level skill, Beast Transformation, also received the same cold gaze. The reason was extremely reasonable and natural. No, isn't that too scary? The ability to transform your body like demonic beasts pouring out of the gate. You never know when those people might suddenly turn into real monsters. A gate has appeared and now people are gradually turning into demonic beasts. What if they are nearby and suddenly turn and eat us? Before that, shouldn't they at least be put to death first? No, since he still has some humanity left, he should at least be locked away. At the time, numerous concerns about wild beast hunters agitated public opinion on the internet. Such public opinion continued until the Hunter Association was launched and its president, Wu Jinchol, supported wild beast hunters on a large scale under his name. However, no matter what Wu Jinchol said, people's concerns about wild beast hunters did not disappear. Moreover, the problem was that even the beast hunters themselves were thinking like that. When will they suddenly lose their senses and turn into magical beasts? Who can guarantee that that will never happen? So, they were always ashamed of their abilities and lived in fear so as not to lose their senses. And it was the same for Baek yun -ho. He already had an unusually large physique, and he had a formidable look as if he could strike down all the demon beasts with one hand at any moment. Because of his appearance, there was always a mixture of fear and terror in the eyes of people who looked at Baek yun -ho. But there was someone who gave Baek yun -ho courage by his side. yun -ho. Baek yun -ho lived his entire life as a firefighter until the Cataclysm. When he raised his head, he saw the senior he respected the most, Captain Sung Il Wan, with a warm expression on his face, with his hand on his shoulder. Yes, sir. Baek Yun Ho looked into Sung Il Wan's eyes. Sung Il Wan's hand, which was holding his shoulder, was hard with old calluses. Veteran, or a famous general. Captain Sung Il Wan, no matter how he was called, was an outstanding firefighter who always demonstrated an unrivaled presence at the scene of a fire. He looked at Baek Yun, O's face, and advised in his calm and reliable voice as always. No matter whether you awakened or gained some abilities, nothing has changed. No matter what the world says, you are still a firefighter and my subordinate Baek Yun Ho. So, just like it was until now, as always. Captain Sung Il Wan spoke with a faint smile, black soot smeared all over his face. Save the people. Baek Yun Ho was shocked by those words as if he had been struck by lightning. Anyone could say something like that. But who was the one who said that? It was Captain Song Il Wan who risked his life and struggled to save people for the past several decades because these words came from the mouth of someone who lived and lived those words. Because it was Baek Yun Ho who watched it closer than anyone else. There was no need for any more words between the two. You're a firefighter, right? Sai. A confident smile finally appeared on Baek Yun Ho's lips as he looked into the eyes of Captain Song Il Wan, who was smiling at him. And that very day, in Korea, a hero is born. S-class hunter Baek Yun Ho. He went straight to the most famous Reaper Guild in Korea. More than anyone else, he deployed his demonic skills at the forefront and began tearing the demonic beasts to death. Even his colleagues were afraid of his intense and terrifying power. Does not matter. Baek Yun Ho didn't care because it was for the people's sake to kill at least one more demonic beast in front of them while they were paying attention to those gazes. 
just saving people. Over the past few decades, this was the most important lesson he learned from Captain Song Ilwan as he followed in his footsteps. That was only two years ago, and just last year. Baek Yun-ho, who became famous through his tremendous performance in just one year, went so far as to establish his guild under his name. But that move was never about making money. Quite the opposite. At the time, the beliefs of Baek Yun-ho and the leader of the Reaper Guild who were only pursuing practical purposes, like other hunter guilds, clashed with each other. Baek Yun-ho called in all the wild beast hunters in the country who were still living in fear, fighting against people's prejudices, established the Baek Ho Guild, and began rescuing citizens in earnest. Why does he do this? There was only one reason. You're a firefighter, right? The last word he heard from Captain Song Ilwan, this was because that calm and heavy voice was still deeply engraved in Baek Yun-ho's heart. Hey, hey, so hi, Captain Song Ilwan said, I have a firefighter. Ugh, no, I understand the situation, so please. Dad, stop crying. Guild members are watching. Blow your nose. Hong, Baek Yun-ho, who was engrossed in an old story, took the tissue Baek Mi-ho gave him and vigorously blew his nose. But even then, I saw tears streaming down from his eyes. Baek Mi-ho sighed softly and placed the entire roll of toilet paper in his hand. Then he apologized to Suho with an expression of sincere regret. I'm sorry, Hunter Song Suho. My father is getting older these days and he is crying more. Yeah, whatever. I understand. Suho just looked dejected. The image of Baek Yun-ho, who roared and attacked with overflowing charisma upon his first appearance, did not match the image of Baek Yun-ho now, crying and squeezing snot. He was also fascinating at the same time. Is there such a coincidence? I can't believe my grandfather knew Hunter Baek Yun-ho. Suho also knew that his grandfather Song Il-hwan worked as a firefighter all his life and then retired. But of course, he did not know every one of his grandfather's former colleagues. But who would have guessed that the famous Baek Yun-ho was his grandfather's subordinate? However, from Suho's point of view, it was a matter of wonder, but from Baek Yun-ho's point of view, this fact was a very important issue. Pang! Suho! Suho! Baek Yun-ho, who vigorously blew his nose again, approached Suho and spoke to Hai. Unlike the first time, his tone was very cautious, as if he were handling glasswork that would break if he touched it. Hmm. I think there was a minor misunderstanding between us earlier. There is no way Captain Song il Hwan's grandson can fall in a bad direction. Cancer. Cancer. Baek Yun-ho knew the personality of Captain Song Hwan better than anyone else. Didn't he even go on to live as hard as he could to save others with just a few words? There is no way his grandchild could ever stray. I was wrong earlier. Cancer, cancer. With that in mind, Baek Yun-ho gave Suho a subtle look and spoke to him. Well, I don't think you'll ever tell his grandfather about such a trivial matter. Ah, now that I think about it, I haven't been able to call my grandfather to say hello these days. Huh, now wait, calm down. Baek Yun-ho was surprised to see Suho suddenly taking out his cell phone. However, no matter how surprised he was, he did not use force to snatch the cell phone from Suho's hand. Instead, he just hovered around Suho, sweating and struggling, trying not to touch a single hair of his head. Sigh. Seeing that, Suho smiled mischievously and put his cell phone down again. Ha! Huh? Then, seeing Baek Yun-ho sighing in relief with an almost corpse-like face, an even deeper smile appeared on Suho's lips. Anyway, that's good. I can't believe I owe this much to the Baek Yun-ho of the world. Since one day I would have to deal with Eterim's apostles, the more strong allies I had, the better. This time, he became close to Thomas Andre, but since he was working in the United States, it was difficult to get help when an urgent situation arose. Suho, who had been thinking for a while about how to cook Baek Yun-ho, finally decided what to do with him. President Baek Yun-ho, don't worry. I won't contact your grandfather for now. Yeah! Ha ha! I knew it! Maybe it's because he takes after his grandfather, but he has an angry personality. However, I have a favor to ask. Hmm? A favor? Baek Yun-ho, who was greatly relieved by Suho's words, suddenly looked anxious when Suho put a condition on him. But surprisingly, the conditions Suho proposed were ordinary. Could you please find Huang Dong-su for me, since he hasn't shown up here yet? I think I'll have to go find him myself. Do you want me to find Huang Dongsu? 
At those words, Baek yun hos expression, which had been flustered from before, turned cold. Why are you looking for Huang Dong-su? What other reason does a bounty hunter need to catch a villain? What Suo held out, along with the answer, was the Association Certified Bounty Hunter Certificate. Right. After checking the certificate issued by the association, Baek Yun-ho nodded in understanding. But the uneasy feeling remained. Huang Dong-su, we were planning to find Baek Ho anyway, so leave it to us. But there's one thing I'm curious about. Baek Yun-ho's eyes, which were suddenly looking at Suho, were full of doubt as before Song il Hwan's name was mentioned. Doesn't saying that he wants to catch Huang Dong-su ultimately mean that he has the confidence to deal directly with even an S-class villain? If that's true, then why on earth does he hide his level of power and still work as a C-class hunter? If you find Huang Dong-su, will you kill him yourself? In response to his direct question, Suho tilted his head as if asking what he was talking about. No? If you kill me yourself, of course, I'd be happy. It's standard for S-class villains to be directly dealt with by S-class hunters. Ah, that's what you said. Only then did Baek Yun-ho let go of his doubts. However, he couldn't help but widen his eyes again at Suho's words that followed. Even if you kill me instead, please leave behind Huang Dong-su's body. Yes. Why the corpse? Oh, I want to see the body. It only takes a moment. No, Captain Song il Hwan, what kind of grandchildren do you have? Baek Yun Ho felt like he should at least call his captain to say hello to him after a ba, long time. My beloved grandchild? The profile photo of the captain, who is living leisurely after his retirement, was full of love for his grandchildren. So it was even more confusing. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 157. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. As the day passed, the internet was once again in turmoil. Breaking news. Case closed. The great escape from Jisan prison. Breaking news. 500 villains were eliminated. Korea has become safer. Intensive coverage. Ask the Baeko Guild. Who is the identity of the hunter who eliminated the villains? Interview. Vice President Baek Miho. He is a hero. Remarks excommunicated. People's reactions to the news that began to spread all over the internet were more enthusiastic than ever. And, it's awesome. It wasn't the White Tiger Guild that caught the villains? What does this mean? Who on earth caught so many villains, if not the White Tiger Guild? Do you have dyslexia? They said it was someone else who solved the case, and the Baekho Guild only handled it after the fact. No, so who is that? Anyway, it's just one person. Haha, <laughs> that's awesome. Anyway, that means that one hunter killed 500 villains, right? At this point, isn't that hunter also a villain? It's a massacre. Here, people's reactions were largely divided into two. Clearing out the villains in Jisan prison was of course a good thing, and the person who solved it was a hero who deserved praise. But the problem was, is that the number of villains he killed was too many. This is a person who massacred 500 people in one day, but it doesn't seem normal at least a murderer. Isn't it okay since we killed villains, not people? Ah, villains aren't even people. Even villains have human rights. Quack. Fact 1. All the human rights organizations that said that are dead now. Fact 2. They were also killed by the villains they secretly hid. Related link. I killed it because it was the same. Related link. Who dares protect whom? On the topic of incompetent people. At one time, many organizations raised their voices advocating for the human rights of villains. However, due to the various incidents committed by the villains after that, most people were now accepting the Hunter Association's claim that villains are defined as humanoid demon beasts. Still, there was such a thing as a degree. Statement of Conviction Still, killing all 500 people was a bit harsh. If he was that strong of a hunter, there would have been a way to save him and send him back to prison. Haha, ha, you are a saint in the corner of your room. And what if he escapes again? Do you want to catch it again? No. So who are you? Why don't you reveal your identity? He's a hero. The atmosphere is like this, but if it were you, would you reveal it? It's not enough to be held up as a national hero, but the national character is condemned as a massacre. Haha. Ha. Besides, I heard that Huang Dong-sok also died this time. 
Huang Dongsu must be desperately trying to hide his identity out of fear that he will come looking for revenge. Haha, <laughs> Huang Dongsu is scary. Stand tall. Late at night, this class villain Huang Dongsu was reading internet news one by one in his hideout when he suddenly stopped. Beyond that was a list of villains who had died this time. Sea level villain Wang Suk, her. The corners of his mouth, which had been tightly closed the whole time, forcibly twitched, revealing his pure white teeth. I burst out laughing at the news that was so absurd. Your brother died? Wang Dong Suk was her older brother who broke up with her two years ago. He suddenly awakened alone, and he was also an abusive older brother who mercilessly abandoned him, calling him a useless bustard. So, even when he was awakened to S-Class later, he had no intention of going there first and trying to get along like before. But that didn't mean he wanted to receive news of his brother's death this way. I thought he was quietly imprisoned in prison, but he suddenly escaped and was caught and killed three days later? And that to one person? When he heard that his brother had escaped from prison, he had no intention of helping. Since he has a very clever personality, I though, uffed he would hide himself well and pay no attention to him. But if my brother died, things would be different. Shouldn't he at least take revenge on his younger brother? But I still don't know who did it. I searched all the related articles, but the White Tiger Guild was completely hiding the identity of him. As someone said in the comment earlier, it was clear that he was worried about Huang Dongsu's retaliation at this point. But, there are no eternal secrets in today's world. Wang Dongsu exposed his teeth and raised his huge body from the bed. The large gold necklace hanging around his neck clattered. As he opened the bedroom door and walked out, the lobby of a luxurious mansion unfolded. This was once the secret villa of a corrupt politician and the third hideout of Wang Dongsu, who killed him and took over. Wang Dongsu walked out of the building through the empty lobby and called somewhere. We were connected soon. Yes, Wang Dongsu. What did you contact me about? A voice in a business-like tone came from the other end of the phone. Wang Dongsu asked directly. I want information. Do you want any information about Wang Dongsu's death? Wang Dongsu smiled and said as if he had been waiting for the answer. You're good at business. Yes, I want to know who killed my brother. I'll give you any amount of money. The money is fine. Instead, if you don't mind... Would you mind helping us with one task this time? Work? Wang Dongsu frowned at those words. You know very well that I am being chased by the association, right? Yes, of course, I understand Wang Dongsu's position very well. So, for what we wanted to do, we chose not a city center, but a rural area that would never be noticed. Sst. Wang Dongsu clicked his tongue with a disapproving expression at the business like tone of the other person who immediately poured out a prepared message as if he had been waiting for him to contact him. Anyway, they are clever guys. Of course, thanks to this, he is still living comfortably without being caught by the association. Of course, Huang Dongsu can solve this problem in an instant. If you do the work, we will hand over the information you want right away. Okay, tell me where it is. This is Yangpyeong. It's not too far from where you are right now. Enter the Shadow Dungeon. The next day, Suho returned home, had breakfast, and went straight into the Shadow Dungeon. The Jisan prison incident caused a huge stir on the internet, but the daily life of Suho, the person involved, did not change at all. This was all thanks to the White Tiger Guild hiding information about Suho as much as possible. Of course, since there was more than one hunter from the White Tiger Guild who witnessed Suho in person, that information could not be hidden forever. No matter what public opinion was, Suho's identity would eventually become widely known to the public one day. However, it was at least possible to delay the timing slightly and release it when Suho wanted. Little Lord, the grid is strong. To reap grid as a shadow soldier, the Little Lord must become equally strong. I said I understood, that's why I came to train so hard. Wang Dong Su, who was once said to be his father's shadow soldier, Grid. Someday, I will either meet him and fight him directly, or the White Tiger Guild will find him and kill him first. To successfully extract him as a shadow soldier again, Suho's abilities were most important. Skill, shadow extraction, shadow power, no mana is required. 
It extracts mana from a lifeless body and turns it into a shadow soldier. The probability of extraction failure increases in proportion to the target's abilities and the elapsed time of the target's death. Level 2 Effect Shape Transformation The shape of the shadow soldier can be changed arbitrarily. Number of shadows that can be extracted 550. There is a chance of failure in the shadow extraction skill. Suho recalled the dizzying experience of failing Twic, E while trying to extract a poison-toothed sand centipede in Egypt. At that time, the centipede was not at a level where Suho could kill it alone, so the extraction almost failed. There are a total of three extraction opportunities. To safely extract the S-Class awakened in those three opportunities, we must become much stronger than we are now. So, Suho entered Amut's Pyramid to become stronger again today. As always, for the daily quest to practice Gangsyojutsu. However, when we arrived here, there was a miserable mummy who had been forgotten by everyone and was continuing her solitary training. Su, kaha, kaha. Yes, that's it. Keep running. Even if my leg bones are pulverized, even if my spine hurts, you can still run. A mummy trudging through the labyrinth of the pyramid under the terrifying laughter of a mutt. No, Dojin Lim. Currently, his entire body is wrapped in item mummy's bandages and he is being trained by Amut. No, it was just training. In fact, it was torture itself. Of course, Suho was also repeating a set routine every day in the name of a daily quest. However, even though the number of times was the same, the intensity was different each time. Amut was increasing the intensity of training by adjusting the gravitational field more and more in proportion as Suho's abilities increased. So Suho was also undergoing training, enduring severe pain every time. But even so, Suho was the son of Shadow Lord Song Jin Wu. There was even a level-up system, so its potential was indescribable. But what about Lim do -hyun? He was just an ordinary E-class hunter. He was said to be the weakest among the hunters, with physical abilities and recovery abilities that were only slightly better than those of an ordinary person. But he had one special talent. It was running skills. You don't need push-ups, just run and run until you're almost dead. No, if you stop walking, you will die by my hands. Hey. As he felt Amut's sincere and murderous spirit right behind him, Limdogan's complexion quickly turned pale. Human limitations have already been surpassed. Even though he looked like a half-corpse with his limbs tattered, Limdogan kept running and running. But he still didn't manage to die. The mummy's bandages wrapped around his body were an evil, or rather useful, item that somehow forcibly fixed his broken body even when his bones crumbled and his muscles and ligaments were torn. I don't think it was originally meant to be written like that. What are you talking about? This bandage is a masterpiece by Kandiaru, who created it to be used like this. Amut chuckled and accepted Suho's muttering. Do you know what? I love watching such insignificant creatures struggle to become strong. Usually, they die then. But, and I looked with great satisfaction at Lim Dojin, who was still running around inside the pyramid, even though he was in a near-dead state. If you somehow survive the pain, that is strength. Suho could not help but nod his head at the resonance felt in those words. No matter what anyone says, Lim Dojin continues the grueling training of his own will. As a result, his leg muscles were swollen to the point of bursting. Without the help of a level-up system or status window, he was just running, with one intention to become stronger. So, let's start the daily quest. Nod. Soon, Suho's training began. And, hmm. Behind them, the newly recruited shadow soldier, Harmakon, was looking around the pyramid, his eyes shining. This could not be the place of the great sorcerer Kandiara. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 158 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl, Shadow Dungeon, a quiet world of rest made up of black and white. Now here, the untimely flapping of the wings of bees was making a small noise. Ween! It's amazing. Queen Bee Arsha let out a small exclamation as she walked through the Shadow Dungeon. Is this the world of rest ruled by the Shadow Lord? Surprisingly, she was now in the Shadow Dungeon in her main body state. The conversation between Suho and Arsha was cut off for a moment due to Baekhyun Ho's sudden intrusion, but after that, Suho dared to bring Arsha's body in front of him. 
In any case, Arsha was in no position to disobey Suo's orders, so in the end, she had no choice but to obediently follow Suo's words. The result is this situation right now. From now on, Arsha's main body will live trapped in the Shadow Dungeon, a pawn, so to speak, or confinement. In short, from now on, Arsha's main body will be unable to leave the Shadow Dungeon without the Guardian's permission. However, her body remained outside, and by using that body, she was able to observe the situation outside. But that's it. Since her main body was trapped here, it was difficult for her to fully demonstrate her power. At best, reconnaissance was the best. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I didn't know it when she was being subjected to one-sided bullying, but Arsha was surprisingly quite pleased with her current situation. I'm sure it's a case of abuse of power, but the welfare is better than I thought. Arsha's ultimate goal was, of course, to inherit the power of Koresha, the King of Bugs and Lord of Plague. But before that, her most important goal was, of course, survival. In that sense, this Shadow Dungeon was a safer place than any other place. What she likes most is that she doesn't have to act anymore. Arsha was not particularly dissatisfied with her current treatment, based on this fact alone. In the past, when she accidentally fell to Earth while wandering through a gap in her dimension, she chose to imitate herself as a human and naturally blend into human society. She played a human and catered to humans. It wasn't an adaptation. It was just parasitism. It was shameful. She, who was born as a queen bee, has to live her life acting like a mere humans. But no matter how strong she was, she couldn't take on all the humans on Earth. That's why she had to increase her load and build up enough strength that she no longer had to hide herself. For her to reign as a true queen bee. But not now. She didn't have to act like a human any more than she did here in the Shadow Dungeon. That fact appealed to her more than anything else. Of course, there was just one element of anxiety. It's Suho. Since the main body is trapped here, from now on Suho can kill himself whenever he wants. I plan to kill you at any time, but I promise I won't kill you if you don't go against my wishes. It's okay, right? A very unreasonable and one-sided contract. Arsha's eyes trembled with anxiety as she suddenly remembered her vow to Suho. But what can you do? Now that things are like this, I have no choice but to do my best not to go against Suho's wishes. Even when she was outside, wasn't she running away from Suho? Hmm, this would be good. Arsha, who had been wandering around the Shadow Dungeon for a while, found somewhere and suddenly stopped. This is a corner of the Shadow Dungeon, a little away from Amut's pyramid. Arsha, who was carefully examining her surroundings around this area, smiled in satisfaction and stretched out her hand. Fly sore, my worker bees. When, then the bees she had brought with her flew out of her body all at once. Addressing her guys, Arsha solemnly declared, I command you in the name of Queen Bee Arsha. Work hard, worker bees. Let's build our new kingdom here. When, Arsha ended up like this anyway, and she decided to create a comfortable palace in the corner of the Shadow Dungeon where she would reside from now on. Anyway, the main materi, all for the honeycomb, was Arsha's magic power, and the remaining materials could be sufficiently collected in this area. So after some time, before she knew it, the beehive, with its basic structure already visible, was gradually becoming complete. But is it because we've become so accustomed to human life? It could be said that it was a beehive, but the queen bee's bedroom was built like a very comfortable and elegant princess room. Hey, good, good. Make a bed here. Queen size would be nice. And over here, there's a tea table and a sofa. The worker bees were buzzing and working hard to match Arsha's detailed orders. Arsha could not hide her satisfaction. Then a thought suddenly occurred to me. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to continue living like this, hmm? What was I thinking? Arsha said that for a moment she had a thought that was unbecoming of a queen bee and hastily erased the thought that had just occurred to her. But deep down, she knew. The queen bee's life was all about living in a safe place and leaving all the other troublesome and dangerous tasks to her worker bees. Arsha felt grateful to her guardian for providing her with such a comfortable space, and she passed on her thoughts to her worker bees wandering around Korea. The content of her thoughts was precisely the order given to her by her guardian. My worker bees, hurry and find Huang Dong Su. Yes. 
Suho not only entrusted the role to the White Tiger Guild, but also enlisted Arsha's workers to search for Huang Dongsu's location. We in Arsha's worker bees outside the shadow dungeon heard the queen's command and began to flap their wings even more and disperse throughout the country. So while Arsha was constructing her hive, Suho finished his daily quest and walked out of Amut's pyramid. Behind Burr, who approached first and spoke, the shadow soldiers of guardians were gathered. Suho's eyes looked at them. Excluding Ver, the total number of shadow soldiers he has saved so far is five. Shadow Lancer Quay, Shadow Minotaur Minnow, Shadow Minotaur Tau, Shadow Assassin Kira, Shadow Shaman Harmakan. The strongest among them was, of course, Harmakan, an elite knight. However, from the perspective of dealing with him directly, Harmakan's specialty was magic. In that sense, to use Harmakan appropriately in the future, it was necessary to properly understand its abilities. Harmakan, tell me about your abilities. Yes, master. Harmakan's answer followed, and in summary, he was able to broadly categorize them into three categories. One, Wraith Magic. Two, Curse, Debuff. Three, Activate Instance Dungeon. However, witchcraft to cast a spell is only possible when there are spirits of the dead around. It's an ability that has limitations depending on the situation. That's right. Suho suddenly remembered Harmakan attacking him using the ghosts of the dead people in Yamiri village. At that time, Harmakan used the souls of humans, but he seemed to be able to use the wraith art on the souls of the demonic beasts in the dungeon. However, the abilities of wraith magic overlap with shadow extraction. Speaking, shadow power could be said to be a much higher level ability than wraith art. Then, from now on, we can collect strong demonic beasts as shadow soldiers and use the souls of the remaining miscellaneous mobs as ingredients for wraith magic. I will keep this in mind. And the curse I use is, oh, let's see that with our own eyes. Suho's sudden grinning smile made Harmakan feel ominous and he quickly looked around. Then, before he knew it, other shadow soldiers were surrounding him. Lord Master, attack everyone. Wow. As soon as the order was given, the shadow soldiers began to attack Harmakan. Oh my. Harmakan was taken aback and started cursing quickly. At that moment, system messages appeared one after another in front of Suho. Harmakan uses skill damage amplification. Harmakan uses skill exploitation. Harmakan uses skill thorn of pain. Yes, this was it. Suho nodded his head, once again confirming the performance of the Harmakan curses he had personally encountered. Damage amplification is a debuff. Exploitation absorbs vitality. Thorns of pain are reflection damage. Looking back, they were quite interesting skills. In terms of the game, Harmakan could be seen as a necromancer specializing in debuffs. And just as the debuff in the game cannot exert much power without party members, the same was true for Harmakan. Even now, even if he applies a debuff, there are no ghosts that will attack him. As a result, Harmakan was one-sidedly beaten by other soldiers without even being able to attack properly. Although he was an elite knight in name and appearance, he had an unsightly appearance. However, in the process, the thorn of pain shone through. All pain and damage Harmakan receives is shared with the attacking target. Kwang! At that moment, Kira's body, which attacked Harmakan with great force, exploded and was thrown backward. At the same time, Harmakan also felt pain, but Kira, who had a relatively weak defense, fell first. Suho chuckled at that sight. So this makes me a tank and not a necromancer? But what if it were like this? Suho changed his fighting style. Harmakan, can you apply the thorns of pain to all other soldiers as well? Wow, yes, yes, anything is possible. Even though Harmakan was beaten by his soldiers, he steadily answered his questions. Then use it all on the other soldiers. Harmakan uses skill, thorn of pain. As soon as he said those words, a curse enveloped the bodies of all the soldiers, and Suho this time ordered the soldiers to attack each other. Then an indiscriminate fight broke out. Chack, 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 chack. Ku quack, 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 quack. The shadow soldiers attacked each other without hesitation, perhaps because they had accumulated so much from each other. Then, at the same time as the attack, their bodies exploded one after another. But in the meantime, they look like berserkers who don't stop attacking each other. Guys like cockroaches. Queen Arsha, who witnessed her grueling and fierce battle from afar, clicked her tongue and ran away to build a beehive again. 
Schwag! In the meantime, Suho's mana drained out, and the damaged bodies of the soldiers began to recover quickly. Suho's eyes sparkled when he saw that. Good? Thorn of Pain, which returns damage taken, had very good synergy with Shadow Soldiers, because the Shadow Soldiers were able to recover no matter how much damage they took. Of course, the prerequisite for this was that it had to be supported by the Guardian's mana. From now on, I think I'll have to invest in intelligence stats as well. Suho immediately invested everything in his intelligence stat, starting with the daily quest rewards he received today. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 159. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. Now for the last time, it was time to check Harmakan's third ability. Harmakan, explain the Instance Dungeon. Instance Dungeon. This time, Harmakan could turn the entire village of Yamiri into a world similar to a dungeon. Harmakan said that he was able to learn this ability after repeatedly studying the legacy of Kandiaru, which he discovered by chance. That's why he claimed to be Kandiaru's disciple. Harmakan answered Suo's question while putting his tattered body back together after being beaten by the soldiers. Yes, master. An instance dungeon is a spell that twists the existing dimension to create a backside world. What is this world? To use an analogy, you can think of it as the world beyond the mirror. It is similar to the surrounding environment, but creates a completely different virtual dimension. Ah, now that I think about it, Harmakan opened his mouth, looking around him with an expression of sudden great realization. Where is this place? Isn't this the Shadow Dungeon, a world of rest that has crossed the border of the Guardian's shadow? The ruined city that now exists in this black and white world could be seen as a world similar to an instance dungeon in some sense. This place is similar to the scenery of Earth where Suho lives but has a completely different appearance. Harmakan complained to Suho and took back what he had just said. Iced coffee. Sorry, master. I think the analogy was wrong. It was not a world beyond the mirror, but a world beyond the shadows. Harmakan's body trembled as he realized where Kandiaru got the inspiration to create the technology called Instance Dungeon. The order was reversed from the beginning, Kandiaru must have developed a spell called Instance Dungeon after the Shadow World, and the purpose is ultimately, level up. Suho received the words and nodded his head. I guess it was developed to help his father level up. It seems so. Until now, Harmakan had mistakenly believed that the purpose of Instance Dungeons was to create his world, because he, the central axis of the world, could reign as a king. But now I see that wasn't the case. He was not a king, just a boss mob. It was just a device to give enormous experience points to players who came to conquer the instance dungeon. Besides, when I looked at it earlier, that pyramid was also the same. Harmakan pointed to the Pyramid of Amit. That pyramid was also full of traces of Kandiaru's repeated research to grow the Shadow Lord's vessel. I guess so. At those words, Suho nodded his head. Strong body training center and instance dungeon. In the end, after much research, the level-up system my father used was completed. Ironically, the unfinished traces of Kandiaru's efforts to complete the system were gathered to Suho one by one. And the result? Master, the instance dungeon that I learned independently has the characteristic of attracting beings with evil spirits nearby. Evil spirits like villains? Yes, you can lie with your mouth and deceive, but you cannot deceive your soul. I can assure you that nothing can be better than my magic when it comes to identifying evil spirits. Harmakan, who likes evil spirits, smiled confidently and showed his teeth. That means that by using my instance dungeon, the owner can gather villains that he can hunt with peace of mind. Very good. I thought he was a special guy, but then I realized he had such an amazing talent. Burr suddenly appeared and nodded with a very satisfied expression. Then, with a smile even more sinister than Harmakan, he urged Suho. Solord, very well, I've been frustrated with how slow the level up has been, but now I can run properly. From now on, you will kill everyone you see, whether they are villains or evil spirits, and become stronger. Arsha. When Suho raised his head while listening to Burr's nagging, a swarm of bees the size of a small doll gathered above his head. Yes, Suho, did you call me? 
What happened to what yo? You ask me to find. I scattered my bees all over the place, but I haven't found any traces yet. Instead, I figured out the locations of several villains in case they were related to Wang Dong. Arsha screamed as Burr suddenly snatched her body with terrifying force. Burr held Arsha high like her trophy and showered her with praise. It is truly amazing. What a useful bee. So Lord, it seems that only now are Lord So's soldiers starting to come together. Let's go level up right away. Why? Bear was taken aback by Suho's reaction and didn't know what to do. Lee, aren't you leveling up? I have to do it, but the goal of hunting down villains has already been achieved. If you are simply trying to level up, it is more efficient to just enter the dungeon. Yes, like all hunters, Suho's activities as a bounty hunter were now much more inefficient. However, there was no need to leave the villains that had already been found alone. Suho said with a grin. Anyway, even if the shadow soldiers kill me, I still get experience, right? Keek, of course it is. Then let's split the team into two. I hunt in the dungeon, and the villains. The shadow soldiers watched Suho's gaze scan them one by one, their bodies tensed and waiting for his orders. Quay, yes, master. At Suho's call, Spear Knight Quay leaped forward and knelt before him as if he had been waiting. I will leave the villains to you. Take Harmakan and Kira and go around and deal with them. Is it possible? Well, like that. Whether there is, if you leave it to me, I will handle it perfectly. Before killing him, I will gather all the information and find traces of Huang Dongsu. At Suho's command, Kuei felt extreme shivers and his body trembled. He gave orders to himself, who was only a knight, to use Harmakan, an elite knight, as his subordinate. Kuei looked down at Harmakan, a new soldier who was stronger than him, with an incredibly proud expression. Heh! <sighs> Did you see it? I am the master's first knight. This can't be happening. Harmakan felt great humiliation from that blatant gaze. Kira was just quietly smiling next to Quay and Harmakan, who were sharing their joys and sorrows. Murder. Right after that, while public opinion is in an uproar over the Jison prison incident, a dark cloud was casting over the villains who had been operating secretly across the country, avoiding the attention of the association until now. So, the metropolitan area is dangerous. I know, yeah. Hey, he. After all, some hunters move to Seoul when they make money, right? The Hunter Association headquarters is also in Gangnam, a suburb far from Seoul. In the middle of the town market, where food was sold to travelers, the villains were sitting and chatting peacefully. Wow. Anyway, the weather is nice today. Wasak. The villain took an apple sold nearby and took a big bite, looking up at the sky with a leisurely expression. Warm sunlight, a pleasant gentle breeze. Isn't this happiness? But, except for the fishy scent of blood that vibrates in the wind. The mayor was covered in blood, bodies strewn about in horrendous condition. This place, which was peaceful until morning, became a living hell overnight due to a group of villains who suddenly appeared. However, the people who committed this terrible act were sitting calmly and chatting quietly. Ugh, these demons. Ugh, is there anyone still alive? Your name is Long? The corner of the villain's mouth went up as he saw the survivor crawling on the floor, breathing hard. Then, sigh. Okay, now it's over. The villain, who had neatly ended the survivor's life, took another bite of the apple he was eating with a refreshed expression. Crunchy. So the people who were caught in the first place were assholes? If they kill all the witnesses like this, how will they know who we are? It was then. Creepy. The villain who was eating an apple was suddenly startled and jumped up to look around. Something has changed. He gentle wind stopped. The sunlight shining down felt somewhat awkward. However, what? What is this? Why are you making such a fuss all of a sudden? When the villain who was eating an apple suddenly made a fuss, his colleagues tilted their heads in confusion. Yes. On the outside, nothing had changed. The smell of blood, corpses, and his colleagues who have been working hand in hand with each other for several months. But things have changed. Fuck you. What are you doing? No, what? Why is this guy like this? The villain, who did not notice any change, just made a puzzled expression as his colleague shouted at him. And, suddenly, uh? His head was cut off while he was sitting still. Took. Degururu. My colleague's head was tilted to the side so vainly and rolled on the floor. What the fuck? Uh? 
only then do the villains feel alarmed and wake up all at once and begin to be wary of their surroundings. At that time, there was a ray of voice passing by their ears. Who? Who? Suddenly, the villain's head was cut off again as he looked back in shock. Now, too. Once again, the voice that sounded like the wind was mixed with a satisfied smile. Ugh! Everyone be careful. I'm an assassin-type hunter. Use your tracking skills. Ah! Fuck! What is that again? The villains were shocked. Sa! They discovered the appearance of ghosts rising like a haze from the corpses they had killed. Heh heh. Many souls have a grudge against you. Wraith magic. With Harmakan's sinister laughter, numerous ghosts grabbed the villains' ankles and strangled them. Ears, ghosts? Holy shit! I don't know what it is, but run away from here. That won't work. I love you so much. Ouch! Quay suddenly approached and pierced the thigh of the villain who was trying to run away with his spear. He then grabbed the terrified villain by his hair with a vicious hand, lifted him, and looked him in the eyes. I like people who talk a lot. Hey! At Quay's narrowed, sinister smile, the villain's expression turned pale with fear. Before he knew it, Quay had returned to the gaze of Lee Minsung, the vice president of the Reaper Guild and an A-level villain. Smirk. Quay asked him. Now, whatever you want, tell me everything you know. If you stop talking, I will rip your tongue out of this snout. Not to be outdone, Harmakan grabbed the already dead villain's soul with his evil hands. Cluck, after all, it is a night grade. You can ask questions after killing them first. Quay gritted his teeth. And that time, tiring, your level has risen. Uh, already? Suho suddenly leveled up. Suho, who was going through the guild creation paperwork with Jin Ho Yu's secretaries, scratched his head with a puzzled expression. How many times are they killing those guys? As it turned out, Korea was steadily turning into a villain clean country. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it, just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 160 This chapter is updated by novels.pel. Thud. Now these are all the documents needed to create a guild. There are a lot. Suho laughed as he looked at the pile of documents in front of him. As if he had anticipated Suho's reaction, Jin Ho Yu grinned, picked up the topmost stack of documents, and explained. There are bound to be a lot of documents. The guild you will establish is already a large guild from the start. Is it because of the Scavenger Guild? Okay. The Scavenger Guild has already started selling Echo Forest Spring Water in earnest, and half of the profits will be used as your guild's income. But is there any way that there are not enough documents? Suho nodded at Eugen Ho's words. Item, Spring Water of Echo Forest. The effectiveness of the detox potion obtained from the ice elves in the Glacier Dungeon was proven through several verifications by the Scavenger Guild. From Suho's perspective, he had already seen the item information, so he knew the effect very well. To sell to other hunters for money, such a verification process was necessary, even if it was somewhat cumbersome. As soon as the value of the detox potion was confirmed, the scavenger guild began the detox potion business in earnest. The public's reaction has already been enthusiastic. It was natural. When hunting magical beasts that use poison, a hunter with detoxification skills was essential but not everyone had such a hunter as a colleague. In such a situation, even though it was inconvenient, I had to go into battle wearing a gas mask. Otherwise, I had no choice but to go to the association's healer after the battle and receive detoxification. But now, with just the detox potion, the paradigm until now would be completely different. And because of Suho's contract with Scavenger, he was to receive half of the proceeds from future sales of Echo Forest Spring Water. However, in principle, such large-scale contracts are only transacted between guilds. In other words, Song Suho's guild will become a close partner with a large American guild upon its establishment, and since Ajin Soft has to coordinate and supervise that relationship, a three-party contract is also required. Yes, so where should I start signing? Since it was something he was familiar with, Suho picked up his pen and listened to the lawyer's explanation. Still, thanks to Yu Jinho, all the complicated contracts and document procedures were resolved, so the guild could be founded by simply signing numerous documents. Yu Jinho, who had been watching Suho eagerly sign his name, suddenly looked at Suho with very serious eyes. Rather, 
as a guild leader, there is probably one most important thing left to do. What is that? Suo's eyes also became serious at that expression. His uncle Yu Jinho was his father's closest colleague, who had his memories of his previous life returned intact. What does he think is most important? Jinho Yu asked seriously. Have you decided on a guild name? Ah, what else can I say? Suo shrugged his shoulders in response. It was a topic I had never thought about because I was so busy. But anyway, to complete these thick documents, the guild name had to be written at the top. Hmm, we just call it a solo guild. Now, wait. Suho was taken aback by Jinho Yu's sudden, greatly embarrassed reaction. Yu Jinho's expression was very complex. Yu Jinho didn't know whether to cry or laugh at this or what kind of expression he should make right now. What the? I wonder if someone is your son. It was Yu Jinho who brought back a nostalgic memory that now remains only as a memory. In the past, didn't Song Jinwoo also try to roughly name his guild Solopo Guild? Why? Weird? Yu Jinho asked Suho's question back. Why do you want to use that name? There's no particular reason. I just like moving alone. I have no intention of recruiting more guild members in the future. That's true, but strictly speaking, you're not fighting alone. There are also Shk Adao soldiers. Hmm. More than anything, it's so tacky. Later, as the guild name becomes more known, it will be exposed in many places. After hearing it, I saw it. Suho nodded to Yu Jinho's logical and desperate persuasion. It made sense. It was a guild that I might be joining for the rest of my life. It was right for the guild name to have a meaning that could express oneself well. That's why I chose Solo. If the meaning is not clearly understood, it is of no use. It's a word that can express me. Suho asked again. Then how about Wujin Guild? Wujin, Yu Jinho's eyes widened slightly as he reflected on the tone. Is that your brother's or your father's name backward? Yes, that's true, but it also has other meanings. What do you mean? Wu of the universe, Wu Jin, to move forward. Suho reflected on his purpose. He has to do what he needs to do next. What I want to do, and for that purpose, the name I want to give to the guild that will grow together. The two together make Ujin, Ujin, which means moving into space. Yu Jin Ho couldn't say anything in response to Suho's subsequent answer. Because I will go to the universe where my father is. That is how the Wujin Guild was created. After forming a guild, Suho began to attack the dungeon in earnest. When I became a guild leader, I realized that there was a big difference between when there was no guild and when there was a guild. Surprisingly, the fact that the guild leader was a C-class hunter was not very important. Such elements are only needed when recruiting guild members anyway, and in the end, Money is what is needed to dominate the dungeon to be conquered. And Suho now had a lot of money. Ten billion. First of all, please focus on the highest grade dungeons with one billion one. Bro. Ah, okay. No, I understand, guild leader. Lim Dogyun, who came out of the shadow dungeon for the first time in a long time, could not get used to the sight of Suho suddenly becoming rich. But making money is difficult, so why spend it? And since the money coming in from scavengers next month will be much more than this month, we take that into consideration and make reservations in advance. Yes, Lim Dojun answers energetically. Suho noticed that his movements were very different from before. Fast. And that change became clear when I took Lim Dojun into the dungeon. Ugh! Why did you bring me here? Lim Dojun's role is a porter. It was a task for Suho to run between shadow soldiers and hunt demonic beasts to collect magic stones. It didn't matter if you did this after the dungeon raid was completed. Otherwise, you could have left it to the shadow soldiers without having to order Lim Dojin to do it. However, there was a reason why he brought Lim Dojin in person this time. Oh, he's really good at running away. Suho was impressed. Amit just told Lim Dojin to run all the time. As a result, Lim Dogen's lower body was trained to the limit, and he was still able to run away from the mid-level magic beasts that were attacking him. Magic power is still at level E, but the strength itself has increased significantly. This is enough. Wouldn't it be possible to deal with a D-class demon or higher on your own without difficulty? Of course, just because his running got faster, that didn't mean his attack power improved. But what if we put a good weapon in Lim Dogen's hands? For example, a bow. 
Therefore, no matter how good the bow was, if it was in the hands of an E-class hunter, its attack power was bound to be very poor. Can you even fire one shot properly in the first place? But what if it's not a magical arrow? Dogjin Hyung, listen to this. Huh? No, yes? Lim Dogjin, who was holding the bow given by Suho in his hand, made a puzzled expression. Guild leader, why is this? I don't have enough magic power, so I can't use a weapon like this. Because I know, let's just aim for a demonstration first. Although Lim Dojin did not understand, he obediently followed Suho's words. Juwook the moment he pulls the bowstring. Mino, shapeshift, schwag! Lim Dojin could not help but be shocked. Suddenly, the shadow minotaur that was fighting with Guardian ran towards him and turned into a single black arrow. Transmogrification, arrow. Ha, ha, hey, what is this? Scared. Limdogen suddenly looked at Suho with his hands trembling as he saw a black shadow arrow fluttering ominously on his bow. Su Suho? No, guild leader? This, this... What happens if I shoot you? What happens? It will fly forward, right? I guess so. Now take a shot. At Suho's urging, Limdogen closed his eyes tightly and pointed the shadow arrowhead toward those scary-looking beasts. And tuck, the moment you let go of his hand... Mmm... <laughs> hey! The black ray of light left his hand and passed through a large hole in the body of the gigantic beast, like a cannonball. Lim Dogen's expression as he stared blankly at that scene was a sight to behold. What on earth is this? What is it? Suho smiled and answered. From now on my brother is also a full-fledged combatant of the Wujin Guild. Guild leader. At those words, Lim Dogen's eyes as he looked at Suho quietly fluttered. E-class hunter. He is the weakest hunter who deserves to be a miner, not a fighter. That was who he was. I am weak. No, always been weak. So that, I always just ran away. From scary demonic beasts, and from his mother who tried to kill him by turning into Mistburn, and even from her father who killed her mother. Mother. Still, when Lim Dojin falls asleep, he always dreams of that day. In that dream, there was always a father who casually killed his mother, a demonic beast, I saw my father like that before my eyes. Ah, do, do, Jun. He was so scared that he turned his back on his father and ran away. So forever, until the dream ends. Lim Dojun ran and ran endlessly, to run away from his father. Maybe, it must have been from then on. My life was always about running away. Did you gain running skills after awakening? That was probably a natural result and a natural reason. Because I am weak. Even after awakening, it is only an E-grade. Because he is still not as strong as his father, who is an S-class hunter. However, right now, Lim Dojun was looking down at his own two hands that had killed an extremely strong magical beast in one fell swoop. My hands were shaking with belated excitement. Of course, he had no intention of being mistaken. This power was not his own. It was just a manifestation of the ability that Song Suho had temporarily lent to him. But why? Just from this one experience, I felt like I had gained courage that I had never had before. Suho, Lim Dojin looked at Suho with serious eyes, and he revealed an important secret that he had been hiding until now. My father actually. Ah, you are Lim Teju, leader of the Reaper Guild? I know, I'm Tae. Well, how did you do that? Suho looked at Lim Dojin's shocked appearance in bewilderment. What should I do? Even though we look alike, we are so similar. If you don't know that, you have to return your Certificate of Acceptance to Korea University's College of Fine Arts. Anyway, seeing as you're finally saying that, I guess you've gained some courage now, don't you? What? Chin. Suho placed his hand on the shoulder of Lim Dogyun, who looked puzzled, and he smiled meaningfully, his eyes shining. So now, can you please contact your father directly? What kind of communication? I've been getting calls these days asking me to return the weapons they lent me. Ha ha. Huh. A Class A weapon that Lim Teju lent to Suho before going to the Glacier Dungeon. The Reaper's Bow, replica, was no longer there because it was taken away by the Ice Elf Circa who left with his mother. Even if Suho became rich overnight, it was only one billy, on one. No matter how much Echo Forest's spring water is selling like hotcakes, it's only been a few days since sales began, so there was no money yet to pay for those expensive Class A weapons. So, take this opportunity to make peace with your father. If possible, could you please hand over the advanced dungeon to me? Looking at Suho's brightest smile, 
the emotion on Lim Dojin's face quickly cooled. And that time, Cha-Cha! Circa was urgently calling out to Cha Hei in, aiming the Reaper's bow replica at the sky. Wow! At those words, Cha Hei in also looked ahead with a heavy expression. That can't be, Grey Blizzard. A huge shadow loomed beyond it. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 161 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl, Tomb of the Dragons. This was the place where the final war between the Shadow Lord Song Jin Wu, the King of the Dead, and Antares, the King of the Light Dragons and the Lord of Destruction, took place. The war between the two powerful forces was truly fierce and brutal, and in the end, it was Song Jin Wu's shadow army that emerged victorious. As a result, from that day on, the corpses of countless dragons turned to ash were scattered like a blizzard across this land. Cha Hai-in and Circa had entered this bleak and desolate land to restore the power of the shadow dragon Kaisel. Kaisel, whose strength had weakened while protecting Cha Hai-in, fell into a deep sleep immediately after arriving here in Cha Hai-in's arms. This is a kind of hibernation. On the outside, it looked like he had just fallen asleep, but now Kaisel was absorbing the power of the tiny dragons contained in the gray ash. While Kaisel was recovering his strength, there was only one thing for Cha Hai-in and Circa to do. Vaguely wandering around this desolate land, at first they planned to find a suitable place to stay and wait for Kaisel to recover. But not long after that, Kaisel woke up yawning profusely. What Kaisel wanted was clear. Keep moving. This was because there was a limit to the power that could be absorbed in one place. In a way, it was natural. In the first place, the energy contained in the corpses of the light dragons was only a mere glimmer of energy. In order for Kaisel, who had hit rock bottom, to absorb enough energy to recover his full strength, he might have to travel all over this dimension. Cha Hain and Circa, who understood the principle, began wandering the land in search of new places to help Kaisel recover. After a while, as they wandered aimlessly, a truly huge and majestic silhouette appeared in front of them. Cha-Cha, I'll cover you. Under Circa's cover, Cha Hain drew his sword and slowly approached him. After approaching through the gray blizzard, finally the reality was clearly revealed before them. Oh my god. They couldn't help but be astonished. It wasn't all reduced to ashes. Surprisingly, in front of them were the huge corpses of dragons that had not yet been reduced to ashes, with only their bones remaining. It feels like I'm at some kind of dinosaur museum. Chahayan felt a little overwhelmed by the grandeur of the giant dragon bones. At that moment, Kaisel also woke up and looked around him with sleepy eyes. Chahayan asked while stroking Kaisel's back. How are you? Do you think your strength will recover faster here? Kaisel slowly closed his eyes, as if he felt good at Chahayan's touch. Circa, who saw that expression from the side, said with joy, Great! It is inevitable that the recovery rate will be much higher around corpses that have at least bones left than corpses that have been reduced to ashes. The corpses of dragons are a tremendous treasure in themselves. In response to Circa's words, India nodded. Even when I think back to my past life, dragon bones were truly a tremendous resource. It boasted tremendous strength and durability to bear the weight of the massive dragon, and of course its mana sensitivity was the best. Great. If we take all these bones to earth and make weapons, it will be of great help to Suho. I know, it's been so old that it's weathered and deteriorated, but if you look closely, you'll find many intact bone fragments. It was just at the moment when Cha Hain reached for his necklace to open his inventory. Creepy. Damage. Cha Hain and Circa suddenly felt like they had made a promise to live, so they scattered in opposite directions. Quang. Then a huge explosion occurred where they were standing. Grumble. In the aftermath of the explosion, the bones of nearby dragons collapsed. Cha Hain and Circa hurriedly avoided the debris and prepared for battle. I'll cover you. Wow. Circa quickly retreated and pulled the bro bowstring, and Cha Hai-in immediately jumped forward with his sword in hand. Then the identity of those who caused the explosion was finally revealed to Cha Hai-in's vision. Kirlaka. Kirukadra. Cha Hai-in's eyes widened. Surprisingly, they were warriors and shamans made of bones. However, 
the figure was not like an ordinary human being like a skeleton. Sirka, who was protecting Chahayin by shooting arrows from behind, recognized their identities and shouted in surprise. They're mercenaries. Dragon disease? Dragon infantry. In Greek, they are a legendary race also called Spartoi. Sparto, meaning the sown ones. As the name suggests, they were warriors who appeared when a dragon's tooth was planted in the ground. It seems like the dragon's teeth that haven't been reduced to ashes have been reborn as demonic beasts, Circa recalled. King of the Bright Dragons, Lord of Destruction. Antares, more commonly called the Dragon Emperor, was the most powerful monarch among all monarchs. He was the strongest dragon in name and reality, and the light dragons he led were an invincible army with tremendous power and magic. For a long time, their bodies were left on this earth instead of turning into ashes. There was no doubt that the power contained in their bone fragments had created the dragon soldiers. However, there was something unclear. A dragon child without an owner is born. This is possible? What does that mean? The number of dragon soldiers was as large as the corpses of the dragons left on this land, and they were continuously crawling out of the ground and surrounding Chahin and Circa. But, white flame storm! Rumble! As Chahayin raised the Demon King's long sword high, hundreds of lightning bolts began to strike from the sky. Kirakrak. Karkak. The Demon King's long sword was a long sword that contained the power of Baron, the King of Demons and Lord of the White Flame. The sword had the power to create a storm of constant lightning in the area. In that overwhelming disaster, the dragon soldiers simply screamed and collapsed. But, Ka! You can withstand this? Chahayan's eyes widened. Even in the storm of white flames that caused great damage to Atalam's apostles, the dragon soldiers were rising again. Chacha, I heard that dragon soldiers are born from dragon teeth and have high defense. It sure looks like that. Chahayan carefully adjusted his sword, crumbling. Don't worry, Kaisel. You can keep sleeping. Sensing something strange, Kaisel opened her eyes with a worried expression, but Chahayan smiled and comforted Kaisel but the damage was definitely done. As the saying goes, the speed of the dragon soldiers who were hit directly by lightning was noticeably slowed down. If you deal with them one by one, won't they all end up lying down one day? Quack! Chahayin, who swung his sword and cut off the waist of the dragon soldier in front, looked back at Circa. Circa, so what did you just say? What's strange? Ah! Circa responded by firing an arrow at the dragon soldier shaman, who was making a magic attack from the furthest distance. I don't know much about the dragon race, but I know one thing for sure. A dragon soldier without an owner cannot exist. There must be an owner. Huh. I originally heard that dragons make dragon babies by pulling out their own teeth. The purpose is, of course, to protect oneself, to be more precise. Circa's gaze turned to Kaisel, who was sleeping on Chahayan's shoulder, protecting the dragon while it is hibernating. That's the purpose of Yongayang's existence. What? Cha Hei-in, who heard Circa's words and realized something strange, looked around. But there are no living dragons here. That's why it's strange. Dragon soldiers who lose their masters return to their teeth. Then what are these guys? It was definitely a strange thing. For this many dragon soldiers to exist, it meant that there had to be that many living dragons here. But no matter where, I looked, I couldn't see any living dragons. What this means is that the material for these mercenary soldiers is the teeth of these corpses. So you're saying there's a new owner? Or someone has appeared who can make dragon infantry using the teeth of other dragons? In the end, it's a similar conclusion. It feels like they won't answer, even if I ask. Thanks to Cha Hyun's necklace with an interpreter function, he was able to understand the words coming out of the dragon soldiers' mouths from earlier. Kirkara. Kill the intruder. You're an intruder. That means we've invaded somewhere, or we don't want to invade. Where is that somewhere? Cha Hyun calmly looked around and shouted as he cut down another dragon soldier. Circa, I will be in charge here for a while, so you can say a prayer to the Lord of the Cold. Circa is a descendant of the Lord of the Cold Cold, and was able to convey his thoughts to the Lord of the Cold Cold. Guardian, a priest, was able to awaken the heroic spirit of the Lord of the Cold from his eternal sleep, but Circa was even able to send a one-sided message through prayer. 
and the message sent in that way would be delivered to Suho, the priest, through the monarch of the cold. This is not what the prayer was supposed to be. Circa began to pray to Selad, the lord of the cold, with a slightly embarrassed expression. So what do you want me to tell you? By that time, Suho and Lim Dogen had arrived in Busan. The purpose is, of course, to conquer dungeons. However, this strategy was a bit of a special case. Are you by any chance the guild leader of Wujin's guild? No, my name is Lim Dogen, the deputy guild leader. Our boss is this. Oh, sorry. At Lim Dogen's words, the female hunter who came to greet Wujin's guild blushed and urgently apologized. Then, with a shy expression, he came in front of Suho and greeted him with a bright expression. Hello, my name is Li Juhi, a healer from the Knights Guild. Welcome to Busan. Ah yes, hello. My name is Song Suho, the guild leader. But why? When Li Juhi, who had greeted Suho, came face to face with Suho, she suddenly looked intently at Suho's face with a strange expression. Suho asked with a puzzled expression. Is there anything wrong? Oh no, excuse me, the boss's face looks familiar. I guess it's just my mood. It was Li Juhi who belatedly apologized to Suho with an, with an embarrassed expression. I'm a very picky person too. How do I know this young man? When I lived in Seoul to begin with, this person wouldn't have been born yet. Juhi Li quickly got to the point, blaming herself for making so many mistakes today. Hmm. Anyway, CEO Song Suho, thank you so much for coming to help our Knights Guild. Hunter Lim Taiju arrived first and is waiting at the guild office. I will guide you, gulp. It was Lim Do Jun who swallowed dry saliva with a nervous expression upon hearing that his father was waiting. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 162 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl the criteria for selecting dungeons for Suho's Wujin Guild were clear. Level up. In other words, the level of the dungeon is high. Alternatively, dungeons with a large number of demonic beasts were best for gaining experience points. But of course, those dungeons were also popular with other hunters. This is because the byproducts of stronger magical beasts are often more valuable, and the greater the number of magical beasts, the more byproducts can be obtained. And of course, those dungeons were expensive to access. However, the current amount of funds held by Guardian's Guild is 1 billion. If it was a lot, it would be a lot. If it was a little, it would be a lot. With this ambiguous amount of money, Suo's Guild had to make a choice. 1. Should we split the 1 billion won in Guild Reserves and attack several low to mid-level dungeons? 2. Should I spend a lot of money at once and buy just one ticket for a higher dungeon? Both of these could be considered not bad choices if you were a normal guild aiming for profit. For Suho, whose main goal was to level up, either way was ambiguous. I've already passed level 50, and now I can't even gain experience points, let alone level up, in mid to low level dungeons. Even if it was an advanced dungeon, it was difficult to guarantee whether it would be possible to raise it to level 1 with just one dungeon. Of course, if more money comes in from the Scavenger Guild starting next month, the whole situation will be resolved. However, I can't just sit in the office and suck my fingers until then. So the choice Suho made was neither of those two options. Although it may be somewhat inefficient for a guild that pursues utility, there was another method if the goal was to level up. 3. Entering a dungeon occupied by another guild this third method is further divided into two. One was to provide support as a mercenary, that is, by receiving requests for cooperation from other guilds. When the guild that purchased the access rights through a bidding competition determined that the difficulty of the dungeon was higher than expected, the guild requested support from other guilds or hunters. However, such cases were very rare. This is because most people purchased dungeon access rights appropriate for their guild's level. Then there was only one way left, transferring the strategy rights purchased by another guild. Usually, in this case, a premium is added to the amount paid at the time the guild bid, and the item is handed over at a higher price. However, since this was also difficult for the Wujin guild with limited funds, the method Suho came up with was blood ties. That's why Dogen tried to buy the guild's strategy rights that he bought through his brother.
After the Lee Min-sung incident, the Reaper Guild suffered from a manpower shortage. It goes without saying that he no longer has the energy to complete all of the dungeon access rights he possessed. You may need to urgently sell off your dungeon access rights just to save money. Since it was the guild his son belonged to, he might hand over the right to attack at a slightly cheaper price. So Suho's plan was indeed perfect. Just one thing. There was something Suho hadn't thought of. I can't believe the Shinigami Guild was that ruined. Yes, Lim Teju is ruined. The Reaper Guild, once considered the best guild in Korea, has steadily declined since the Lee Min-sung incident. At least, thanks to Kuei handing over all of the slush funds he had hidden during his lifetime to Lim Teju, he was able to find some relief from the financial difficulties that were on the verge of bankruptcy. The problem was that the hunters who had already cancelled their contracts and left the guild did not come back, because the company's image has already gone into ruin. So Lim Teju made a bold decision to use this opportunity to find his original intention. Rather than recruiting new guild members, the remaining funds were used to increase the ransom of guild members who remained loyal and did not leave even in this situation. Then, they took off their clothes from large guilds and began working as a small elite guild, just like the Wujin Guild led by Suho. Anyway, as the situation was like this, Lim Teju was also in the same situation as Suho. The Shinigami Guild he leads has decided to operate as a mercenary group for the time being, as it can save the most capital. And contrary to their public image of having gone to hell, they were instantly welcomed by the industry. A mercenary group that included S-class hunters was unprecedented. In particular, the guild that first sent a love call to them was the Knights Guild, a representative guild in the Yongnam region. As you probably already know, our Knights Guild is a large guild with the largest number of A-level hunters in the country. While moving to his office, B-class hunter Lee Ju He stood by Suho's side and explained about his guild. However, Although there are many A-class hunters, there are actually no S-class hunters, so difficult cases like this one sometimes arise. So, I am really grateful that Hunter Lim Taegu came as a mercenary this time. Rattling. Every time Lim Taegu's name came out of Lee Juhi's mouth, Lim Dojun, who was walking next to Suho, shivered and became stiff. Seeing that, Suho smiled and lightly patted Lim Dojun on the back. Brother, relax your expression. If anyone sees you, they'll think you're going to fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lim Dojun was already completely broken, and finally it came. This is the office. It looks like they are having a strategy meeting at the moment. Smart. When Lee Ju He knocked on the office door and entered, Su Ho and Lim Dojun followed. At that moment, the eyes of the hunters who were having a heated meeting all turned towards them. What? During a meeting, someone suddenly... As they were about to say a word, they recognized Lee Juhi next to Suho and silenced her. That woman, with her elegant and graceful aura, was a well-known figure within the Knights Guild due to her unique, bright, and caring personality. A healer with a good personality is welcomed wherever he goes. She was even given the nickname Angel in White. Among Busan citizens who had received help from Lee Juhi at least once. Of course, it was impossible for her to gain such recognition simply because of her good personality. Above all, Lee Ju hees former job was a nurse. She had been working at the hospital for a long time before awakening, and was not only skilled in recovery skills, but also in various emergency treatments. What she meant was that she was a professional healer with the ability to calmly take care of patients even when her magic power was depleted during battle. Hmm. Hunter Lee Ju hee who is with you? This is Song Suho, the president of Wujin Guild, who promised to visit today. Ah, additional support as mercenaries. Li Juhi's answer instantly brought Li Che to the hunter's eyes. At the same time, their eyes quickly swept over the figures of Suho and Lim Dojin next to Li Juhi. Those gathered here are the leaders of the Knights Guild. As this is a gathering place to resolve the emergency that has hit Hyundai, Busan, any outstanding hunter is always welcome. However, if you have not clearly proven your skills, the situation is different. Wujin Guild. According to the information, it was a new guild that was recently established. It's also a small guild with only three members, including the guild leader. 
Originally, a guild that had no such certification would never have accepted them as mercenaries. In an emergency situation like the present, if people without skills were to hold on to their ankles for no reason, there was a risk that it could turn into a major accident. But the problem was that the person who recommended Wujin Guild was none other than Lim Teju. Although he is a mercenary in the Knights Guild, which does not have an S. Das Class Hunter, Lim Teju, an S Class Hunter, is actually the core and actual leader of this operation, and his influence was considerable. Still, if Taiju Lim personally recommended it, there must be some hidden potential, right? Seeing as there are so few troops, it might be a guild that focuses on buff skills or healers. Various thoughts passed through their heads, but ultimately they had no choice but to look down on Suho. The reason was none other than the frozen appearance of Lim Dojin, Suho's companion. Were they kids after all? I'm anxious. It would be nice if I didn't have to hold on to my ankle for no reason. The hunters couldn't help but click their tongues at the sight of Lim Dojin, who was frozen like a stone in the same posture he entered the conference room and unable to breathe properly. Without even thinking about who was first, they went up to the podium at the right time and looked at Lim Teju, who was presiding over the meeting. In this case, no matter how much Hunter Lim Teju's recommendation, I have to oppose it. Hmm. What on earth is Mr. Lim Teju thinking? Hmm. But what is this again? In fact, Lim Teju, who was planning a strategy with a charismatic spirit on the podium, suddenly had a breakdown, just like Lim Dojin's. What is this? The hunters took turns looking at the two people, who froze with the same expression as soon as they saw each other, making puzzled expressions. Thanks to Suho, the reunion of father and son after a long time began in a very breathtaking atmosphere. Seeing Lim Teju and Lim Dojun not having the courage to speak to each other first, the leaders of the Knights Guild couldn't help but swallow their saliva and become nervous. When they realized that Lim Dojun was Lim Teju's son, they remembered Lim Teju's heartbreaking story from their information network. On the day he awakened, his wife turned into a mist burn, and the mist burn attacked his son. In order to save his son, Teju Lim took the mist bun that belonged to his wife with his own hands. This story was a very famous one, as it happened on the day Lim Teju awakened as an S-class hunter. Did you say your son left home after that? It's worth it. Whatever the circumstances, he witnessed his father killing his mother. Since they were aware of the situation, it was not that they did not understand this atmosphere. But, why are you doing this here? I wish everyone would just turn it off. Breathing. I'm stuck. I'm so busy. Park jong -soo, the president of the Knights Guild, and Suho shook hands, trying to ignore the atmosphere. Nice to meet you. My name is Park jong -soo, an A-level hunter who leads the Knights Guild. This is Song Suho, the president of the Wujin Guild. Park jong -soo was a fairly decent and polite person. No, to be precise, I had no choice but to show that attitude. This is because... Unlike other leaders, he received information about Suho from Lim Teju in advance. The main character in the photo taken with Hunter Lim Ju during the Lee Min Song incident, a mysterious person whose face could not be clearly recognized because the quality of the drone photo was so poor. With the emergence of a new promising talent, many guilds were eager to find out his identity, but to think that he found out on his own like this. This was an opportunity. If... As Lim Teju said, he would grow into a great talent in the future, there was no harm in forming a good relationship. Park jong -soo smiled kindly and personally pushed the chair and handed it to Suho. Now, CEO Song Suho, please sit down first. Since we are in a situation where time is running out, let's have a more in-depth conversation after the meeting. Soon the meeting began. In the end, Teju Lim went up to the podium to conduct the meeting again without even having a proper conversation with Dojin Lim. Lim Dojin's eyes gradually became calmer as he sat next to S. Yuho and watched his father like that. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 163. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Busan Hyundai.
It was relatively recently that strange signs were discovered on this beautiful white sand beach, which is crowded during the holiday season. The Knights Guild, a representative guild in the Yongnam region, patrolled the entire area of Honde after receiving reports that people kept going missing there. And he found it. Skeleton. The leadership of the Knights Guild was silent at Lim Taigu's words. The area where skeletons appear is expanding. In the video, numerous skeleton soldiers were seen crawling out from hiding under the sandy beach, and the hunters of the Knights Guild were seen defeating them. Looking at the battle taking place on the screen even at this very moment, Park jong su the president of the Knights Guild, gritted his teeth with a serious expression. The problem is that I don't know where they came from. Looking at the situation, it was clear that a dungeon break had occurred in the waters off Busan. However, the location of the key point, the gate, could not be found. Judging by the constantly proliferating skeletons, it seems clear that there is a necromancer-type monster behind them that summons these guys. Assuming it is a boss mob, the location of the boss mob is usually at the very end, that is, inside the gate or near the gate. Only then did the speechless leaders rush to open their mouths. So our night guild is doing its best to search for the gate. We are unable to find the location of the gate. Currently, it is even questionable whether a gate has occurred in the ocean. That can't be possible. There is no precedent for a gate to occur under the sea. It's only been two years since the cataclysm occurred. A new precedent can always be created. A dimensional rift, a gate, connecting the Earth and the extraterrestrial dimension. The mysterious phenomenon would suddenly appear anywhere in the world. But why? Until now, a gate has never been observed in the sea with its constant waves and turbulence. I don't know the reason, but it was a truly fortunate event for humanity. No matter how one imagines, the future of humanity, deprived of the sea, could not help but be bleak. But I couldn't feel safe forever. Just as no one could have predicted the cataclysm two years ago, no one can know what unexpected changes will occur in the future. The hunter who raised his voice at the end was pointing out this very point. Stop. With one word from Teju Lim, the atmosphere of the hunters who were shouting at each other was instantly cleared up. Those gathered here were the leaders of the Knights Guild, that is, A-class hunters. Each may have their own strengths and weaknesses, but since they were hunters of the same level, they also had equal rights to speak. However, even more so, Lim Taegu, the only S-class hunter among them, had a higher right to speak than anyone else. As soon as the atmosphere became quiet, Lim Taegu opened his mouth again. I agree that we must remain open to any possibility, but there are limits to the power we can mobilize. If the gate really occurred under the sea, this was not a problem that could be solved with the power currently gathered here in the first place. Lim Taeju's judgment was that if it was not a problem that could be solved anyway, it would be better to exclude it. So, first of all, we will set up a search team under the premise that the gate's location is hidden somewhere along the coast. After explaining the situation, Lim Taeju's eyes moved and made eye contact with Suho. Well, you understand the situation, right? Suho read his intention and nodded silently. Hmm. In that sense, there are two tasks facing us now. Then, Teju Lim suddenly saw Dojun Lim next to Suho, cleared his throat briefly, avoided his eyes, and continued explaining. One is to continue to block the magical beasts that appear endlessly on the coast. Of course, you're doing well now, but we need to deploy as many troops as possible here. Hearing those words, everyone nodded. To prevent demonic beasts from leaving the beach and flowing into the city center, the more troops there were, the better. Moreover, the first ones that appear in Dungeon Break are always weaker than the ones that appear later, as if they were a scouting party. In other words, due to the nature of the Dungeon Break, there are only skeletons now, but there is a high probability that more and more dangerous demons will appear in the future. In order to prepare for this, it was necessary to deploy sufficient military power. Two, in the meantime, find the location of the gate as quickly as possible. This role requires me to go through the crowds, so I plan to select only a small number of elite investigators led by me. At those words, President Park jong su raised his hand and asked a question. Do you have separate standards for the elite few? 
Yes, since the main purpose of this job is exploration, we will mainly hire people who are confident in speed rather than combat power. Speed rather than combat power? The moment I heard those words, Lim Dojin's eyes brightened, and he raised his hand just in time to select people to volunteer for the search team. Lim Teju was startled by that sight, but soon continued speaking in a calm tone. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. We ask that only B-level or higher volunteers volunteer for the gate search team. It is very dangerous because there is a high chance of suddenly encountering a boss mob. But even after hearing those words, Lim Dojin had no intention of putting down his hand. I am confident in my speed, because there is a problem with running away. Seeing Lim Dojin's eyes showing that he would not back down, Lim Teju looked at Suho, asking him to do something to stop him. But Suho chuckled and said, raising his hand as well. Although it is not Class B, our Wujin Guild will also join the search team. Yes, please do so. In the end, Lim Teju had no choice but to nod his head with a shocked expression. Wasn't the reason Suho came here in the first place to have him join the gate search team? However, he never imagined that his son, who was only an E-class hunter, would also step forward. But since he is the guild leader, he will be responsible for the safety of his guild members. He even went to the glacier dungeon with me. Lim Teju suppressed his anxious feelings and ended the meeting after delivering detailed strategies to the hunters. Then, the operation begins now. Lim Teju divided the group into four people each, forming five groups. But here a problem occurred. I will be the leader of group one, and Hunter Song Suho of the Wujin Guild will be the leader of group two, and Article three. Yes? I beg your pardon? Naturally, the hunters who volunteered for the search team, thinking that Lim Teju, an S-class hunter, would lead everyone, could not help but be embarrassed. No, this is different. I heard that Hunter Song Suho is a C-rank hunter. Our lives are at stake, so how can we do this? Lim Teju calmly responded to them as if this level of dissatisfaction was expected. Again, our purpose is exploration, not combat. So I guess I told you from the beginning to only volunteer those who are quick on their feet, well, that's true, but what we are looking for is the location of the boss mob, but shouldn't the minimum level of safety be guaranteed? You're right. Besides, I am a B-rank hunter. Does it make sense to follow the instructions of a C-rank hunter? After, at best. Although it was a reasonable complaint, Lim Teju could only laugh at those words. Suho, no, CEO Sung Suho. Have you not been remeasured yet? I was busy creating a guild. Be sure to get remeasured after this is over. That way, you won't waste your time on such useless arguments. If that's the case, I'll take charge of Team 2. I'll leave Group 3 to my subordinates. Hmm. While talking with Suho, Hunter, who was the leader of Group 3, stepped forward with great vigor. A-class Hunter Zhang Yuntei. He was the vice president of the Knights Guild and had a close relationship with the president, Park Zhang Su, who were like older brothers and younger brothers. Zhang Yuntei looked at each of the two trillion one members with a disapproving gaze. Song Suho is a guild leader and a C-level hunter. The guild member is Lim Dojun, an E-class hunter. And next to it, who is that woman? Is she a hunter from the Wujin Guild? Next to him, Aesil, whom Suho had summoned from the Shadow Dungeon, was included in Group 2 as a member of the Wujin Guild, and the other one was a B-class hunter from the Knights Guild. Sk. Zhang Yuntei clicked his tongue and said, Compared to the other groups, Group 2's combat power is particularly poor. If this is the case, it would be better for me to move to Group 2. Of course, I am the leader. Yes, of course. Ah! When Suo obediently accepted, it was Zhang Yuntei who was rather embarrassed. Suo transferred the members of the Knights Guild to Group 3 and resigned from his position as leader. And he said, pushing the back of Zhang Yuntei, who became the leader of Group 2 in his place. It's okay for me, so let's leave quickly. Huh? Zhang Yuntei, who suddenly became the leader of Group 2, felt something strange. But anyway, the four people were decided. And after a while, Lim Teju gave the final instructions to the search team that arrived at Hyundai. Then, each group will disperse to designated areas. Regardless of whether there is a special situation or not, we will exchange opinions in real time as much as possible. Yes, I understand. 
Zhang Yuntae coolly responded to Lim Taiju's words, and he looked back at the two meager groups of hunters he led and gave an order. Our second group will go right through the skeletons and search from there. Then, let's go. Fa! With those words, Zhang Yuntae jumped forward at incredible speed. Then he looked back and shouted to keep pace with his teammates. Never fall behind, huh? There was no one behind, huh? Zhang Yuntae turned his head forward again with a puzzled expression. Then, surprisingly, all the hunters in group two were running in front of him. The speed is fast. This is why Hunter Lim Taeju added the Wujin Guild to the search team. Zhang Yuntae was impressed and also increased his speed. But what is this? No matter how hard I ran, I couldn't keep up with their speed. Even Lim Dojin, an E-class hunter. This can't be happening? Does this make sense? Zhang Yuntae was not the only one surprised by the scene. Even Lim Taeju, who was looking at Group 2 with concern from afar, couldn't help but widen his eyes. Then suddenly, Zhang Yuntae, who came to his senses, hurriedly followed behind the second group of hunters ahead and shouted, Wait, there are too many skeletons there, so it's safe if you come with me. At that time, it's just right. To level up, Suho, who was running ahead, raised his fist towards the skeletons crowding in front of him. A frigid blizzard. Wow! At that moment, a bitter cold swirled around, covering the skeletons coming in front of Suho. What the heck? Just like that, a pure white blizzard swept away the bare bones and even froze the waves coming behind it to white. The king of the yetis and the lord of the cold opens his eyes. At that moment, Silad, the lord of the cold, who had been in a state of eternal sleep, opened his eyes. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance.